Hey, Mitch, you, uh, can you do payroll for me? Oh, oh, sure. I have to, it's due on Friday, so I need to get it done. I'd like to get it done before that, actually. Okay, That'd be Mom. good. I got it. And Mom, I decided to take that uh, photography class this semester. Cool. Oh, and the accountant called, too, and said um, they need my payroll tax deposits by Monday. If you can get that, too, that would be... Fabulous. Yeah, I can do that too. I know, I know. Just another thing to do, but you can get it done. I don't know. I feel like it's about time for me to yeah. get out of Morris for a little while. Yeah, that's Maybe true. Maybe some kind of a study abroad or some kind of road trip with friends or something. Oh, a study abroad or a road trip with friends, huh? Yeah, right. They're pretty similar. Either or, huh? <laughs> I was diagnosed when I was five with MPS6. My disability gives me my drive. Without the experiences it's brought, both bad and good, I can't imagine myself having the same passion for experiencing every little bit of life that I can grasp. Hi, Deb, this is Kendra Gosslaven, and I'm on my way. Okay, thank you, bye. The way you dress helps others kind of realize that you want to be successful. I picked my outfit out the night before, from top to bottom, shoes and socks, everything. <laughs> because I don't want to get up any earlier. <laughs> I was diagnosed at the age of four, and they told my parents that I wasn't going to live past the age of 10. Back then, there really weren't treatments for MPS6. Biomarine focuses on the neglected diseases, the rare diseases that the big farmers don't want to touch. We're developing treatments for children. We're doing things that I think have a huge impact in the world. The diseases that we seek to treat usually affect young children. They usually have a pretty high fatality rate. So these kids, their conditions are pretty miserable in some sense. When you see these families struggling with very young children, you know, it, it, it really hits home. Without Bob Marine, this patient would have absolutely no hope. There is nothing more motivating than that. I always like to drop the full name, you know, mucopolysaccharidosis maritolome. Even though I want people to understand, it's good to kind of mystify people every now and then. My body is missing the enzyme that is needed to clean my cells. Need help. <laughs> because the enzyme is missing, there are these substances that build up in every cell of the body, and it causes progressive damage. Damaged cells make the organs work poorly, so you have trouble with your heart and your lungs and your joints and growth. They have normal size organs that have to fit into these small body frames. This disease takes lives at quite a young age. Living with MPS6 is not easy. It's a devastating diagnosis. It is devastating. It is. I haven't slept a full night since my son was diagnosed over 10 years ago. And that's because I get up and I go and check to make sure that he's still breathing every single night. And my biggest fear is that I'll go in there and he won't be. Supportive care for MPS6 before naglazine was very limited. I think it must have been depressing to be a geneticist because he would just give someone a, a diagnosis and, okay, the geneticist would tell the mom and dad, there's absolutely nothing we can do for you. Just go home, you know, love your kid, make their life as good as possible, enjoy them while they're here. Everybody receiving an MPS diagnosis back then was getting a death sentence. There was no real hope. January of 2000, right after the holidays. I got here uh, May 9th, 2000. When we joined, he had hair. <laughs> 
and my hair was brown. <laughs> we worked in a place called the Pink Palace. The Pink Palace was where they made Negozyme first. We literally were manufacturing the product in what was the administration building of the company at the time. We broke the elevator several times. As a graveyard shift operator, my first year was watching one bioreactor, making sure it made it through the night. I was walking in, there was a department of one at that point in time, that was me. We had just gotten approval for our first product, Alderazyme. It was partnered with Genzyme, and literally was all hands on deck. It was a little bit crazy from what I heard. It just was a really exciting place to be. There was a lot of turmoil but then there was also a lot of focus. We do enzyme replacement therapy, which means that we're identifying an enzyme in the body that doesn't work properly, and we develop a replacement for that enzyme, give infusions to the patient, and you know, if all goes well, that replacement enzyme goes into their body, does the job, and voila. Research can be very frustrating because you work and you may not see results. Product development is not a straight line. There are lots of ups and downs and bumps on the road. Some days are better than others. You know, some days are more aggravating. You never know when, when that result's going to come through. The real story back then was the Naglazyme development course. It wasn't a slam dunk to begin with. How far back do you want me to start? <laughs> Naglozyme itself was discovered in Australia at the University of Adelaide. There were a lot of different pieces to the story. I think there were important people like John Hopwood who characterized the enzyme that was deficient, Elizabeth Neufeld who discovered the nano-6-phosphate, Amylcoccus, Stu Swedler. It was really the collective effort of a lot of people that made this possible. Between eighth grade, to like sophomore year, I was having a problem with my spine. The energy level was gone, and you know, I just couldn't do a lot of things, like even like turning a page in a book. My mother called the president of MPS Society. She said, this is my daughter, like this is what she has, and I need help. I had an email from Biomarin. They were talking about starting a clinical trial, and they were going to be looking for patients. She said, they're doing a clinical research enzyme trial for that specific type, and they really want that age group. So she gave my mom Dr. Harmitz's direct number, and we hoped for the best. Around 2000, Biomarin became interested to do their first independent clinical trial for Naglazyme, and they said, we've got the perfect study for you. <laughs> oh, good, I sort of shook my head. I was pretty busy already. <laughs> We brought six families to Oakland, some of the patients coming from all around the world. We had patients who moved from the Dominican Republic, France, Brazil, Guatemala. We had an Austrian patient, a Portuguese patient. A few of those kids, they were from another country. It's like, I can't really speak French. <laughs> This was the very first time there was something for a patient with MPS6 that was going to potentially help them. There were a lot of doctors in Guatemala that told my parents that I wasn't going to leave for a long time. We came in 2003 for the trial. My family, they left everything in Guatemala, careers, house, friends, because it was going to save my life. Do you remember the night we got there? It just seemed really... It was dark, and I remember thinking, what? in the world How are we doing? have we gotten into. <laughs> so the study was six months? Six months. Six months, yes. They put all families in a hotel for the duration of the study. So that's where we all lived together. The fact that we had to get IVs on, I was not happy about that. <laughs> I was like, Mom, why did you make me sign the contract? <laughs> the infusion they were almost like six or seven hours long. We were hoping and had been working with the FDA to get approval. We knew we were having a good, strong biochemical effect, but the FDA wanted a functional outcome. You really have to be able to find something you can measure to be able to prove that you know you have something that can improve a patient's lives. They do a lot of testing. 
Some of the things I had to do was a stair climbing test. They do coins. Like, how fast can you put the coins in the cup? Then we did a 12-minute walk test. You know, just trying to see how is the treatment working. See if you can take about 10 steps this way, and then we'll have you take 10 steps the other way. You're asking a five-year-old to walk as fast and as hard as they can. And so there was a fair amount of worry, of course, as to whether or not we were going to hit um, the endpoint. At the MPS Society, we kept a close observation of the progression of the clinical trials. Biomarin kept us fully informed. Parents need to know that there is research that's going on. You always want to provide hope. As the months went on, you could see the improvements. My breathing became easier. I could walk farther. We saw dramatic results. We had patients go from 20 meter walks to 200 meter walk tests. But at the same time, you're very nervous. It just takes one patient to get sick and not do well on a walk test. And you know if this doesn't get approved, it's going to be a, a real crisis. This was the only option. This had to work. There was a real sense of urgency, not only for the patients, but for the company as well. Uh, the way I like to describe it, what do you do for a living? Well, I work for a biotech company. Well, what's that like? Well, I've been working on a product for six years. We just spent $300 million. Thursday, they'll tell me if it's any good. It allowed us to kind of prove to the world that we could take a product from start to finish and get it approved. We made it, you know. This was ours. It was our accomplishment. We celebrated at a Mexican restaurant nearby the Pink Palace, but it was a bad Mexican restaurant. <laughs> but we spent a lot of time outside on the deck drinking very overly sweet margaritas and celebrating our uh, glories. When you've got a treatment that's been approved where there's not been a treatment before, it's, it's incredibly exciting. It just was awesome. <laughs> This drug does something for patients. It doesn't just make them feel a little better or make them feel like someone cares about them. It's doing something that's changing their life. Even after we got approval, there was a lot of fear in 2005. There was a lot of uncertainty, even though we were on the verge of a tremendous product success. We were close to not making payroll. We really only had enough cash for, I think it was something like another nine to 12 months. I was actually on my way back from my honeymoon when I looked at my Blackberry and um, the announcement was made that our CEO at the time was leaving the company. Most of my friends tell me, what are you doing? You're nuts to join this company. You're gonna waste your time. And I say, no, I don't agree. They were very good people at Baumrein. They were passionate about what they were doing, and they deserved to be better managed, basically. JJ was one of those individuals that you would, you would go into hell and back for. I could see that there was a potential to turn around the company. The key was Naglazyme. Naglazyme was very advanced at that time. With Naglazyme, two-thirds of our patients in general are outside the U.S. We said, how are we going to get it to all the patients around the world? We have no infrastructure. We didn't have a single commercial person on board. We just hadn't done that kind of global outreach. There were negotiations between Baumarin and Genzyme to have Genzyme acquire Nagazyme rights outside of the U.S. Maybe Genzyme would be the partner of choice. We're already working with them. They have capabilities. Why not? JJ made the call. He stepped in and said, you know what? We're gonna do this ourselves. We built our worldwide infrastructure. This is what we spent our whole career, you know, building up to. It's the delivery of our medicines to our patients. Now it's game time. We'll go out into Russia, China, Eastern Europe, Latin America, all of those places, if there were patients and physicians that wanted our drugs. In some cases, only a few patients in the country. Finding them and to deal with all the bureaucracy, getting to the infusion center and getting home. It can be very, very challenging. And that's what we excel at. It's the essence of personalized medicine. That's what we do. It was a fundamental decision to get Baumruin on the map. It's a fully integrated company from research and development, manufacturing, and commercialization. It's about more opportunities to fund research, to come up with different products, to expand our reach around the world. All good stuff. Before I was 
on the medicine, I really couldn't walk by myself. I had a walker, and it's in the garage. Now I don't need it anymore. I am a marketing communication specialist at the Center for Disabilities. I love being with people. So if there's a project that somebody needs help with, I will totally go over there and help them. I mean, it's been pretty incredible. My work is really awesome. I go to the hospital weekly. Typically, I have my infusion on Friday. Hey, Ellen. Good morning, Kendra. You're gonna be in 16, right over there. Okay. They're putting the missing enzyme into me. I've got some really amazing nurses, so we're talking, and it's funny how fast you can forget, like, where you were at, like, whoa. <laughs> we did a 10-year follow-up study, and it really is a truly remarkable therapy. It was almost unheard of to see patients older than 20. We now have a whole cohort that are in their 20s and almost 30. Did you, you were you going to audition for the uh, children's play or? Yeah, yeah, I auditioned on Wednesday. Did you? Yeah, and I, I mean, I got callbacks. Uh huh. But then I decided that I, just, I do not have time this semester. <laughs> in high school, I auditioned for like every single show possible. I was in The Wiz, Once Upon a Mattress, Man of La Mancha. When I get up on the stage and inhabit a character, my heart's racing, my blood's pumping, and the magic just, it just occurs. This past 10 years has made me who I am. It has formed me. I'm a, currently a computer science and biology double major. What my real desire is, is to make genetics much more available to everyone. And then I also want to kind of invest myself into my writing. This past summer, I ran a Kickstarter to raise funds for publishing an autobiographical book and then for adapting that into a screenplay. I was quite frankly amazed at how many people believe in me and what I hope to do. Each patient has a, an amazing story. It's pretty remarkable. You could see these patients progressing year over year. I saw Isabel. Her eyes are wide open as far as her possibilities now. For my first quarter as a college student, I took six classes. My friends tell me all the time. She's like, you took six? I'm like, yeah, I took six. I mean, there were some days that I was, you know, a little bit stressed. But if you believe that you can, it'll pay off. I want to be a psychologist just because I want to help people. I want to work with kids who are in a wheelchair. I think I can relate to and I can bring them joy. I'm this kind of person that I, I always like to try everything. If I want to be a dancer, of course you're going to be a dancer. There's no doubt. Now I'm doing a program in the hospital called Dancing Power. It made me feel alive. It's a great feeling. When you talk to the patients, I mean, they tell you, they tell you about the things that they are able to do, you know, climbing stairs or being on their bikes or being more independent in school and at home. I mean, it looks like not much to some people who don't understand the disease, but it's, it's absolutely fundamental. I think what Naglazine means 10 years later, we're getting some indication of what happens for patients who start very, very early. The earlier we can find these patients and get the treatment started, the better the outcome. Isaac was diagnosed when he was 18 months old, and um, he began treatment when he was 24 months old. I see it every day. He leads a, a normal life. <laughs> I don't like cereal very much, uh, usually eggs. I drive off to school, I'm usually late. Um, I don't really like sports, um, but I do like ping pong. It's my favorite sport of all of them. I like skating and I skate when, I'm, when possible. I mean, he's running around beautifully and we, we really you know, credit that to starting early on, on therapy. Our Marin is, is, it's very difficult to explain, but they're just different. It's not, here's access to therapy, here you go, you're on your way. It's, it's continually checking in. Hey, stranger, <laughs> how you doing? Good, how are you? 
good. I'm the area MPS specialist, so I work with the physicians and infusion centers, and it makes it much easier for the patients like Kendra to be able to have their infusions, live their life as productively as they can. Hey, girl. Hello. Hey. How's it going? Good. Nice smile. Finals over? No, actually. Oh, okay. We just have had years and years together of not only, you know, this, this the drug and this disease, but there's been a lot of family dynamics. They both have gone to college, dances, we had quinceañeras. Next, I guess, is a wedding. Who's getting married? Not me. Is it about first? We have such a friendly relationship. We text each other, call each other, and sometimes it's just to say hi, see what's going on. Yeah. I could be watching the weather and be like, oh, it looks like Preston's gonna get a lot of snow. I tell you everything, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, I think Michelle, for me, she's like a family, like my aunt. It's a family approach. BioMoran has always had the patient at their forefront in terms of what more could they do? Biomarin held a meeting which brought international participants to look at living with um, MPS in adulthood. What can we provide to these young adults now? For the first time, we were able to look at the challenges ahead for people whose lives we're changing. Patients are asking, can I have a family? Independent living, jobs, relationships, sexuality, everything that we all take for granted. Me thinking 10 years from now, I'll be married. I want to be married and have my family. This has been unbelievably rewarding. You know, it's the high point of my medical career. I always have dreams, I always have goals because they keep me going. So I wrote a book called Live, Laugh, Lemonade, A Journey of Choosing to Beat the Odds. You know, my hope was anybody could read it, no matter if you had a disability or not. When I held the first book, like, in my hands, it was so wonderful and weird and incredible and just like, is this real? I would love to be able to make a cool impact in the fashion world. So I like that color, but that's definitely me. Especially when making clothing or shoes or stuff, you know, for individuals with a disability, because I know how much I feel empowered when wearing an awesome outfit. Oh, that's cute. Get me out of that comfort zone. <laughs> and I like sparkle. What girl doesn't like sparkle? <laughs> Naglazyme allowed us to be here today. Naglazyme really transformed the company. I think Naglazyme is really the cornerstone of this company. Naglazyme is what brought the capital in to expand the pipeline. The five drugs we have on the market today are the only drugs approved for the disease they treat. We have nine other opportunities in our portfolio, and they're all in development. So we're not stopping. We're not afraid to explore a completely new area, a completely new disease that we've never worked in before. Our crew that's building this building, once it's done, our goal is to get us to the next level. We're not afraid to kind of shake things up and to push the envelope. Oh my heavens. It's impossible to imagine the inventions and innovations that are gonna come out of that. There are children being born today. The discoveries in that building will fuel improvement in their outcomes tomorrow. This is really just the beginning, and now we're on a journey for the next 10 years. An enzyme replacement patient said, if I could, I would go and kiss each person at, at Biomarin and thank them for what they do. Yes, they are a pharmaceutical company, but at the same time, they're just a lot more than that. I can't imagine not having all of the MPS patients. I can't imagine them not being in my life and not getting up every day and knowing that what we're doing, it's really amazing. I just have to share, I have an overwhelming sense of pride about what we're doing, you know? I got the opportunity to actually tour where they make the medicine, they go inside. You had to be very sterile so you looked like a doctor. <laughs> it's because of you guys that I am able to write books, to have a job without Biomarin. 
like I wouldn't be where I am today. I've always just had this insatiable curiosity in trying everything. I think that's really a part of what being human is, is just knowing that we're all there to live, you know? We're all there to fight for, fight for the future. <laughs>